Hello everyone, my alt account is this here and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a radio. The first thing that we want to do is go into the workspace and add a tool. I don't really care about what I name it but I'll just name it radio. I'll add a part to it and this part I'll call it handle so that it gets welded to the player's hand. I'll also make the size of one by one by one cube. Now I'm going to create some things that we need. A remote event. I'll call this controls. This will allow the player to send things to the server for the server to create a sound. So we also need a local script and a regular script of course. And we're also going to need GUI for it. So first I'm going to make this GUI and starter GUI so that we can see it. So I'm going to make a frame first. This frame, I'll set the anchor point to 0 .5, 0 0.5, and then set the position to 0 .50, 0 0.50. This will position it in the center of the screen. I'll also make the size 0 .20, 0 0.40, so that it's a good size. And I'll make the border a little bit bigger. Now, I'm going to add a text label. These cannot be interacted with, and that's what we want. We want it to sh tell what the player to do. So I'll set this anchor point to 0.5 and 0.5 and I'll set the position to 0.5 and 0.15 so 0.50, 0 0.150 that's going to be right there I'm going to set the size to 0 0.80, 0 0.20 and turn on text scale and change the text to insert radio ID below so now we're going to add a text box these are interactable. They allow the player to type in whatever they want into them. So first thing, I want to change the placeholder text. Also make the placeholder text black. I'll make it enter ID here and turn on text scaled. So I also want to make the anchor point 0.51 because it's going to be near the bottom. And now the position 0 0.50, 0 0.80. I also make the size 0 0.8, 0 0.10, and I'll make the border slightly bigger. Now I'm going to call this one also ID and create a text button which the player will be able to click. And I'll make the background color 3 green by setting it to 0, 255, 0. I'll make the outline 2 again. Also turn on text scale, set the text to play. And I'll also change the anchor point to 0.51 and set its position 0 0.50, 0 0.950, and I'll change the size to 0 0.50, 0 0.10. Now that we got the GUI complete, I also want to change this border size to 0 so it looks cleaner. So now we got the GUI complete. I'll also name this button play, and I'll move it into this tool, and I'll move this tool into starter pack which will be replicated into every player's backpack. Now we're going to get to the scripting. First thing, just remove that the placeholder over there. And now we want to define some variables. Player equals game.players.localPlayer. That will just be the player. Also want to say character equals player.character or player.character added colon wait. What this will do is if there's not the player's character, so if it's not loaded yet, it will wait for it and then set that as the variable. We also want to define some more. So tool equals script.parent. GUI equals tool.screenGUI. Frame equals GUI.frame. And ID equals frame.id. Now I'll just define remote as the remote event. So tools.control, I mean tool.control. Okay, now I want to create some functions. So first function, hide GUI. This will basically set the GUI's parent back into the tool so the player cannot see it anymore. I also make a function called stop and that will fire the remote event with the parameter stop. Also set the ID's text. To now whenever the tool is equipped this is an event I'll make a connection which connect to this function pass the parameter mouse 
I want to stop any playing music. And I also want to detect whenever the mouse gets pressed by the button 1. So this event, we're going to make a connection. No parameters. This will set the GUI's parent to the player's player GUI. So player.player GUI. Now, we want to define some more events. So tool.unequip, colon connect, hide GUI. Also tool.unequip, colon connect, stop. These will both get connected whenever the tool is unequipped. So now I also want to make another another event. So frame.play.activated, colon connect, function. We want to fire the remote and send play and the ID. So ID.text. I also don't need two numbers here. And I also want to hide the GUI whenever they play, so there. Now that's it for the local script. Now we're going to move on to the regular script. So get rid of the placeholder text. Now define some variables again. Player equals script.parent.parent.parent. This may look confusing, but this is how this works. Script correlates to this script, which is the script that we're opening. So if I click over here, show and explore, it, it shows the script. So the parent of it is the tool. Parent of that is the backpack. The parent of the player's backpack is the player. So that's how that's gonna work. And I also want to find remote as the script parent script parent controls. I also want to create a sound. So local sound equals instance dot new sound. And I put it in player dot character or player dot character added colon wait. But that's going to be the same thing that we did back then. We wait for the player, the player's character if it wasn't loaded already. And I'll also set the sound volume to 1. And set the loop to true. Now, whenever the remote is activated, so remote to on server event, we want to connect the function. Player is a default parameter for DOM. We also want info as one and ID for whenever the player clicks play. So also we'll create a P call here. So local success error equals P call function. What P calls do is if there's an error in here it will just set success to false and error will just be a string that says whatever the error was. So now we're going to create some if things. If info equals equals play just be sure that's capital. So then print. Well, you know, I don't need to print this. Let's say sound dot sound ID equals RBX asset ID colon slash slash and then concatenate the ID with two dots. So this will just get the sound ID and as an asset. So you'll be able to play it. And of course, play the sound. But else if info equals equals stop. Then we want to stop the sound, so just sound colon stop. And if you have a P call, it would be nice to know what the error was. So let's say if not success, then warn error. So now I click play. I receive the tool down here. I click and then I can enter an ID and boom, it starts playing. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to join the Roblox group and check out my game Cave Mining. Also join the Discord server, I'll leave all of that in the description down below and comment down what future Roblox tutorials that you want to see. Be sure to stay tuned.